Whatever happened to Wes and Amy Omar? This has been a question on many activists' lips since they both vanished from the animal rights movement, with Wesley seemingly vanishing from social media completely about three years ago. Many of you will know Wesley Omar as the star of the UK documentary How to Steal Pigs and Influence People, which aired on Channel 4 in January 2020. The documentary, currently unavailable to watch, follows Wesley, a charismatic animal rights activist, as he breaks into farms and liberates piglets from their gruesome fate. The documentary also features contrasting opinions from people in the UK's carnivore diet scene. The show resulted in hundreds of complaints for supposedly showing UK farming in a bad light, and for allegedly containing material which was likely to incite crime. Wes and Amy were already notable in the UK's animal rights scene for founding the UK's Meet the Victims, a farm exposure movement started by Leah Dolinger in Australia in 2018, where activists walk onto farms and engage in non-violent action by sitting in and exposing what they see to social media until police and the media arrive. The last sighting of Wesley on social media came in 2020 when, totally at random, he changed his Facebook cover photo to an image of a pro-life quote. Unfortunately, I don't have this particular image he uploaded or any screenshots of his profile at the time to hand, but I do remember the following. The amount of friends and followers Wesley had at the time on social media due to his notoriety as one of the UK's most well-known liberators resulted in a giant amount of backlash towards him on this cover photo from fellow vegans given the highly contentious nature of the topic he posted about and its randomness on his profile amongst a sea of animal rights posts. While of course Wes had every right to post whatever he wanted on his own profile, what struck everyone as odd was how extraordinarily out of place and abrupt this cover photo seemed, especially as all he'd ever really posted about before was animal rights, and this strange cover photo change also came seemingly at the height of his notoriety, given his recent appearance as the subject of a UK documentary. And it's around this point where Wes and Amy disappear from the animal rights scene, and the mystery begins. Shortly after the pro-life cover photo change and the resulting backlash, Wesley removed all his profiles from social media, and Amy either deleted her own accounts or at least removed pretty much everyone she had from the animal rights movement as friends. That same year, though I can't place exactly when, Wes and Amy got married and also had a baby. Stories vary as to whether Wes and Amy remained together after this happened, but with Wes still absent from social media entirely, Amy set up an Instagram page revolving around mothering. Seemingly out of character for Amy, the page featured absolutely nothing about animal rights, and it appears her advocacy completely ceased from here. It was from around there that rumours began to circulate that Wes and Amy, the UK's Meet the Victims founders, were no longer vegan. Much of what I'm now about to tell you is hearsay, based on stories from small fragments of the movement that knew Wes and Amy. Nonetheless, I feel that it's very important to mention. During the filming of How to Steal Pigs and Influence People, it's alleged that Wesley's behaviour became so increasingly erratic to the extent that the producers became so unsettled by Wesley's behaviour that they had to stop filming the show. It's alleged that Wesley started shouting at people down the phone, perhaps to do with something concerning Amy. The fate of the piglet Wesley liberates in the documentary is unknown, but at the end of the documentary there are questions raised as to whether the piglet was safe. After the documentary, and after Wes disappeared from social media, it's alleged by some reliable sources that Wes and Amy began eating animal products, with some saying that Wes forced or pressured Amy into eating eggs. It may have been the case that around then, Amy cut off all contact with friends and family. This is after a suspected breakup or two between Wes and Amy, possibly including while married. In September 2023, a post from an anonymous author in a Facebook group for exposing ex-vegans indicated the likelihood that Wes and Amy were no longer vegan, with incredibly telling evidence coming from Amy's Instagram account. How could it be that Amy Omar, the co-founder of the UK's Meet the Victims, was now following carnivore and hunting pages?
The mysterious nature of this case became too much for me. I decided to message Amy directly on Instagram to see what she said. On the 25th of June this year, I sent Amy the following message. As you can see, previous messages from this account of hers to myself talk about a Meet the Victims event she and Wes organised, a chilling reminder of her turnaround. So that confirms it then. It appears that Amy, at least, is definitely no longer vegan, with strong indications that this is likely the case for Wes too. Furthermore, some digging on Amy using her new alias appears to confirm some telling things about Amy's living situation with regards to the question of whether Wes and Amy are still together and living some kind of carnivorous life. For the sake of protecting myself legally and not being responsible for doxing, I can't reveal much more than this, but all I'll say is Amy now appears to live and work in a place that is particularly relevant to Wes that would seem to indicate they are together. So how does this all happen then? How can it be that two of the UK's most prominent and respected activists went from meet the victims to eat the victims? Let's explore some theories. One thing I've noticed about ex-vegans is that they often move in twos. That's to say, when one sibling goes ex-vegan, so does the other. When a husband goes ex-vegan, so does the wife, and so on. Could it be that Wes and Amy are a case of the psychological phenomenon known as folie à deux, a French term meaning madness shared by two? a rare psychiatric phenomenon in which symptoms of a delusional belief are transmitted from one individual to another. Essentially, could Wes's seemingly erratic and strange behaviour he was showing towards the ending of the production of the How to Steal Pigs documentary be indicative of a downward spiral towards delusional behaviour where perhaps he took on some out there anti-science beliefs, going on to transmit these to Amy? After all, why would Wes, one of the country's star animal rights activists, end up allegedly pressuring Amy to eat eggs? What were his thought processes? Why would he so suddenly believe this? And why would Amy, also a seemingly free-thinking, radical animal rights activist, take on such anti-animal beliefs herself? Here's one thing I found that was incredibly interesting with regards to this theory on the Wikipedia page about the phenomenon of folie à deux. Shared delusional disorder is most commonly found in women with slightly above average IQs who are isolated from their family and who are in relationships with a dominant person who has delusions. From what I gather speaking to those who knew Amy, Amy appears to fit this exact criteria. Going off of the observation that ex-vegans often move in twos, a compelling second theory arises. One of my friends in the vegan movement recently made a very interesting point about how cognitive dissonance manifests in a vegan individual as a result of seeing people they love, admire and see as good people do the thing they believe is wrong, in this case eating animals. Essentially one thought process that contributes towards people becoming ex-vegans is this. My partner is a good person and good people do not do evil things. Because my partner is a good person, and they eat animals, eating animals cannot be morally wrong. This challenges my perception that eating animals is wrong. After all, everybody in society does it. Am I just a weird one, as a vegan, who is seeing something as evil that all these good people around me are doing? Recently in her ex-vegan statement, 
Ex-AV organiser Mira Lubin wrote that it's a quote-unquote giant red flag if you are feeling pressured out of doing something that is eating animals that is quote-unquote completely normal within society everywhere. With Wes returning to eating animals for whatever reason, could it be the case that Amy just fell into the trap of believing animal murder is good as a result of the cognitive dissonance she may have experienced via Wes, a man she adores and looks up to, the father of her child, murdering animals himself. Societal pressures and the resulting dystopia, that is the anguish of being vegan in a non-vegan world, we experience as vegans is powerful. And when someone so close to us, such as a best friend, a sibling or a partner, return to eating animals, this makes weak-minded individuals fall into the trap of seeing animal murder as good themselves. Essentially, has Amy done something crazy, that is return to murdering animals, as a result of, well, feeling like she was the crazy one in a society of good, normal people who eat animals? After all, it's just the food chain, right? Many of us vegans will say that there is no such thing as an ex-vegan, with the idea that if one is to return to abusing animals, they were never truly vegan in the first place. And well, in the case of Wes and Amy, could this be true? According to Wikipedia, Hero syndrome is a psychological disorder that causes a person to seek recognition for heroism, especially by creating a harmful situation in which they can then resolve. This can include unlawful acts such as arson. The term has been used to describe behavior of public servants such as firefighters, nurses, police officers, security guards, and politicians. Reasons for this kind of behavior often vary. Knowing what Wes and Amy did, this is telling. After all, Wes and Amy absolutely were, in my eyes, heroes. What a badass activist couple they were, risking their freedom and their safety constantly to liberate the oppressed. While the description of hero syndrome isn't a perfect match for Wes and Amy, in that they weren't doing things like putting animals in danger in order to save them, which would be analogous to the arsonist with hero syndrome, you know, starting fires to then get the glory for putting them out. It is striking that Wes and Amy, two ex-vegans, could be committing such heroic acts throughout their time as vegan. I mean, it's not like they were apologists or something. These two were radical vegans putting themselves in the face of it. So was this all just a bit of a facade? Did neither Wes nor Amy really even care about animal rights? Were they in fact just doing this to be in the spotlight? To be seen by others as heroes, a feat they both successfully achieved. I found the caption on this video by Animal Liberation Media to be very compelling. In a vid titled Hit Report, How to Steal a Pig and Not Make It About Yourself, the liberators write, After seeing the shit show that was How to Steal a Pig and Influence People by Channel 4, we visited a farm and took two pigs who will never again be destined to slaughter. That documentary was so human-centric and fame-oriented that we had to make our own How to Steal a Pig in Three Easy Steps video. The idea is obvious. Whilst open rescue could be a useful tactic, we should consider the safety of the individuals helped free and our own freedom to carry on working, and no one should be engaging in open rescue as a tool to grow their social media presence and their business opportunities. It's about time that we shift the focus from our face to the individuals who we're supposedly aiming to help. It is their story, not ours. Doing anything else makes us self-absorbed and ego-driven. Liberation is communal and cannot be achieved by creating saviors and heroes that will free all the animals. We need more anonymous, quiet and smart individuals being accomplices in the fight for animal liberation and less pretty faces to follow on Instagram. We need active participants, not likes on posts. Amy's Instagram follow list indicates that she is now a Christian. This is in stark contrast to her old beliefs, according to those who knew her, who claimed she was not a religious person. It's also said that Wes used to be a spiritual person, though he didn't identify as a Christian. Could Wesley's final action on social media, which was to change his profile cover to a pro-life message, 
be indicative of a religious change within himself. Now, of course, there are Christian vegans. Some of you watching this video right now will be vegan Christians. But let's not pretend that religion isn't often a huge barrier to people being vegan. With many Christians, for example, quoting Bible verses that they believe condone the oppression of animals. Could it be the case that Christianity, or at least their own interpretation of it, has caused these former animal protectors to now become animal oppressors? This final theory might seem a little more out there, but notable instances of this have indeed happened before. What if Wes and Amy, or perhaps just one of them, are undercover police who conducted radical animal rights actions in order to gain intel on our movement? In 2003, undercover police officer Mark Kennedy, alias Mark Stone, infiltrated various protest groups, including environmental and animal rights groups, in order to do this very thing. Kennedy's infiltration was so deep that he even had sexual relationships with unknowing female activists and encouraged violent and radical actions such as attacking police and committing arson. And that's not all. Other UK cases include the Bob Lambert case, where an undercover officer by that name, using the alias Mark Robinson, infiltrated various protest groups and even fathered a child with one of the activists, all under a false persona. The case was so shocking that the Met Police even paid compensation recently to Lambert's son and the female activist as a result of being born and raised in his son's case and impregnated in the case of the female activist under a total lie. And that just scratches the surface. A Guardian expose revealed that this problem ran deeper and that this very pattern of tricking and impregnating female UK activists was true of several other UK cops. The problem got so bad that Lush even ran an anti-spy cops campaign in 2018 to show their support for the victims of police infiltration. Could it be that this charismatic young man and documentary star, and this seemingly sweet and heroic girl who spent her time between actions volunteering at an animal sanctuary near Liverpool, had been undercover police? Could it just be the case that one of them was? Wes and Amy's disappearance into secrecy and the lack of response on this matter could indeed be indicative of something sinister. And if this is the case, feelings of betrayal will be rife among those of us that thought we knew them. If anything in this video is wrong, Wes and Amy are free to come forward and tell us the truth. But one thing's for sure, we deserve answers. The victims deserve answers. Everyone that's come here drives me with inspiration and emotion and drive to carry on and fight for the animals. People have come from different countries and all around this country to come today and stand in solidarity, stand united in the unison for the animals and show the world, show the country, the plight, the suffering, and the unnecessary killing that happens to these innocent animals. As you have seen, we are not carrying any baby piglets in our arms. Police took the piglet by force only say that what we saw on there will go viral, we will make this yeah. happen and we will make everyone who we possibly can see the footage that we got today which needs to be circulated and without you guys we could not have done that, we could not have ever given the animals that platform.